three, two, one. And yeah. Can you we hear me, right. by the way? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Yeah, he I will. Can. <coughs> yeah, I can. Um, hey, everybody. Um, hey, Shem. Hey, Smada. Um, welcome to another session for the Wilco Hackathon. Um, today we are going to have um basically some really really wonderful members of the Wilco team. Um, they will take you to a deep dive into narrative and quest building. Um, with me, I have Shem. Shem is the CEO of Wilco, and he does like really awesome stuff building Wilco. And we have Smada, which is who is the brains behind every single gamification that you can see on Wilco. So guys, um, can you quickly you know, introduce yourself again? Maybe I did not do justice to the introduction. So let's start with Shem. Yeah, you did a pretty good job. So as uh, Shadrach mentioned, I'm the co-founder and CTO of Wilco. I've been a software developer in the past uh, 15 years, doing all kinds of roles, then like some data engineering, some mobile development, backend stuff, uh, uh, and lately mostly web. Uh, I've been, I, I, I did some kind of uh, management for, for a small period, but most of my career was a senior engineer, staff engineer, uh, as software architect. Madar? Yeah. Hi. Um, so I'm Smadar. I'm the uh, product manager and gamification specialist here. Also, I'm di director. It changes. Um, I'm a, I'm a product designer and a manager, and I'm also a mystery maker in my spare time. I'm doing lots of like immersive experiences and other unique events across the world and on digital form. Um, I've been doing it for the last six, seven years. And I created like anything and, every, and the, like the fantasy company that you already experienced or gonna experience while playing with our platform. That's it, I think. Oh. All right, um, thank you so much for introducing yourself again. So I uh, will just have to leave it to you guys. Um, Shem, I, I, I don't know how we should start it, but okay. Um, so that maybe you should start with the narrative, um, a deep dive into the narrative process when, um, when building a quest. Then after that, then Shem, you can take it away with you know, a deep dive, deep dive into the quest builder. Um, yeah. Perfect. Good luck, guys. <laughs> Thanks. So basically, um, my goal here is to tell you a bit more about anything and the characters and give you like tools that you can play to make your quests more, uh, more uh, engaging and exciting, uh, fun, uh, and to use those to help users um, finish the quest and get like a, be a better learning experience. So I'm gonna share a presentation, hopefully. Um, Shadra, can you hold, allow me to share a presentation? I'm not going to share my presentation. I'm going to tell you about it without one. Great. No, you, you are able to, to share now. Oh, yeah, you perfect. can share now. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. Um, so, can you see my screen? Perfect. Um, Shem, can you just, can you confirm that you can see my yeah. screen? Yeah, yeah, yes, we can. Perfect. So let's first talk about Anything. Anything is the fantasy company that you're going to use to present your problem, idea, conflict, drama, whatever you want to do. And here's what you should know. Anything basically is, like e uh, is, a, is a company that, creates, that created an e-commerce platform um, that allows users to buy stuff. And basically, we're playing a bit with like the fact that we are not selling anything important, just like random stuff. And um, we, at some point, uh, gonna introduce more of like a bit more cryptic elements, but you can already play with it right now. That like we're selling some weird stuff, but there's also something a bit fishy going on. Like people disappear. We're not sure like why are we selling those things. We have like secrets. Um, department that are doing random stuff. You can all play with it to create mystery or to create something funny or whatever you want. Um, so this is actually the company and you can 
um, use our website, which is anything.market, um, uh, right? Marketplace, Shem, correct me if I'm wrong here, but we can also send it later. Um, to, you know, use more elements to make it feel more real. So like specific um, items or like specific pages, whatever you want, you can reference that. Basically, um, so if we're talking, I mean, that's, that's mostly what you should know um, at this point about the website. And of course, once you know that this is like a, an e-commerce um, platform, you can play with it about, like, think about what, the, what we did, what, what my, my, um, a product manager will ask from the um, engineering team. Um, so those are the characters. Some of you already played the, plus, uh, the game, already met mostly Ness, Vanessa Cooper. She's the R&D uh, team leader, but we also got Navi from DevOps and more people that you're gonna meet because those are the people that are more relevant to you. Basically, so we can keep like the, the um, the traits of our of Ness, which is like the main uh, character, we gave different characters so you can play with and sort of like inject more of your uh, personal uh, voice and tone to them. So basically you can choose from two characters. One is Luca. And if you, um, we can send you also the, the character sheet, but you can see if you click on it, oh, sorry. If you, you can see like a, we got like a photo and everything, like a lot of more information. Uh, and then basically what you should know about it, that she's a woman, and she's sort of like Ness's uh, arch and enemy, nemesis, uh, at least Ness's eye, eyes. So basically Ness thinks she is like her um, arch nemesis. But basically in, in uh, Luca's eyes, she's like wonderful and cute and she loves her. And you can play with it like for to create to inject some humor into it. Uh, basically her character is like she's cheerful and kind and you can use it to support and encourage, encourage um, the, the players basically. So this is Luca. And we got Kim uh, Blazkowicz which is basically another team manager. Uh, he's a man. He's a relatively new employee. Um, and there's some sort of like a, a mystery element to him. Uh, no one really know where he, he come from. And at this point, and they're too shy to ask. Um, and he got this like sort of like uh, foreigner vibe, which is like full of interesting and he's, he's mysterious. And he got like this random saying that obviously he translates from his original like place of birth, but you don't really know, like it sounds a bit weird, a bit familiar, you can play with it and do something funny about it. Um, but basically the, both of those characters are like um, team manager, manage, and then they want to basically help you or come with a request for you as a, an engineer. So you're gonna choose whatever, whoever you want and you can play with them um, to ask the player to do something. While you're designing the game, I'm gonna just uh, finish the presentation. While you're designing the game, the, the quest, think about um, the, the, the world that we created as a platform that aims to help you engage and make more fun for the user. So if you already know what you wanna teach them, then that's great, that's perfect. Try to think about like real life scenario that you can help them and use that, the world that we created to support that, to support whatever you, whatever you wanna teach. If you don't know already what you wanna do and what the topic of your quest? Think about like what a problem day to day, or actually like maybe like a crisis that might occur when you design something like that. Um, people tend to love drama, but you don't, maybe you don't want to overdo it and actually do something a bit more uh, mundane. Whatever you choose, try to make it fun, um, a bit mysterious maybe, or more like a comedic, bizarre. Why would you do that? Um, sort of thing. And of course, keep using real life scenario. We figured out while we designed the, the quests that the quests that people love most and actually finish most is, are the quests that they feel like they're actually working on something that we might use on the website, on the fake marketplace. So we encourage you to do so, to do, um, to do the same. And if you wanna, I don't know, like say that we're like working on a new feature, of course you can um, invent one. Just make sure that it sort of connects to the whole thing. And hopefully it will make your game much more, I mean, your quest much more fun and intriguing. And that's it, I think. If there are any questions, I'm not sure if we can see them right now, but if there are any questions, I'm, I'd be happy to answer them. I think we'll, um, we're gonna save the, the question to the end. Oh, sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure um, uh, Shedra gonna like collect all of them. Yeah. Um, 
but meanwhile uh, no question for now so we, we can continue uh, yeah. the other the, part the only thing i will say is that i think you can still there are some there's still room to schedule like a 15 minutes um, meeting with me if you need any help going over your ideas, think about like a fun twist to add to a, a concept that you already got that you know how to make make, him, uh, make it a bit more interesting. So just feel free to schedule it um, later on and I'll be there to help. Take it away. Cool. Uh, thank you, Smadar. Um, now, after we, we went over uh, the narrative and, and the story behind anything and 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 the characters and and what we are uh what kind of story we build um let's think about the the, the education side um if we're taking a look on quest we want it to be built in a certain way so people from one side will feel they they learn something but on the other end they don't want to be like feel uh too uh too lost in the game and have some kind of structure and help. So how we are taking a look on a quest, we usually break it out uh, to two couple of steps. And the first thing is uh, to think of a quest of one thing that you want people to, to, to learn, whether it's to how to work with specific tool, whether it's how to refactor a specific code, or just a general sense of how what is the flow for implementing some stuff. So after we understand what is uh, the main the main challenge or, or the main subject that we want to focus on, we want to break it down to, to a couple of steps. And for this, we we have a specific structure. It's usually pretty uh, simple. Um, we, we can share, Shadrach, maybe give me uh, the option to share my screen. But uh, when we're thinking about Quest, we build it into steps where each step uh, we want to have one and single action that the user uh, be able to achieve. And by achieving this, they will be able to go to the next step. So uh, let me share my screen for a sec. Here you go. <clears throat> So um, this is the developer profile uh, pr uh, protocol that we have uh, for Wilco. Everyone that wants to build Quest, please start here. We have the homepage and from there, from here, uh, you have uh, a small explanation and please start here. Um, and being a developer, it's always, always very comfortable to, to start from something that already exists. Uh, specifically here, we, we have some kind of quest template that you can start. In the quest template, um, we have already uh, went over uh, our syntax and our DSL. There is uh, all kind of YAML files. But before you're drilling into the YAML file, I do want to encourage you to, to use the readme. Uh, the readme is uh, a plain English version of the quest. It helps us a lot internally when building a quest. Uh, we usually start from uh, a doc or readme to explain or, or imagine what we want the user to, to do. So it usually starts from uh, the basic stuff, and it's really important for us uh, and for you as a quest builder to 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 plan something before you uh, you dive deep, deeper to the actual implementation. So what is the title? That it doesn't have to be final. You have, you you are able to uh, to change it um, afterward. What is the level of, of the audience that you uh, focus to? Uh, whether it's like a very senior one that they know, I don't know, they know exactly how Node work, how our Kubernetes work, or this is for very for beginning and you want to teach them how to navigate in, in the front end code and, and skills that they want to, to learn. All of these are like some kind of, of, uh, of, of, uh, of common ground so you will be able to better understand what, what are the user know, and it will be easier for, for the one that's going to play those quests, understand what they need to do or what kind of things they need to cover in order to play this quest and complete it. Okay, uh, then um, a quick overview about in this quest, we want to uh, learn about promises. In this quest, we want to learn about REST API. In this quest, we want to 
uh, understand what is database modeling, okay? Very specific stuff. Um, please don't try to, to, to build a very broad quest that cover, uh, I don't know, performance and also how to lay out uh, uh, a CSS uh, box. As focused the quest it will be, it will be easier for your users, but also it will be easier for you to lay out the quest and check exactly what uh, things are doing. Okay, then as I described, we want to build it into quest. Why I want to build it into quest? First, so users will be able to have some kind of sense of advancement because the user want to, to see that they are moving from one step to another, they get some kind of uh, success uh, feeling, uh, they know they are on the, the right track. But also, um, as you know, software engineer can go like to a dozen uh, paths. Um, when we build all kinds of quests, we, we thought that user will be doing this thing and they will, it will be obvious to, that they were going to change this code and et cetera. And then when the quest came out, users are going to like doing all kinds of crazy stuff that we never imagined is going to uh, take there. So you want to create some kind of path with a specific checkpoints. This is why the steps are there. So for a specific, uh, so I do want to encourage you to, to build it into very, very, and break it into very, very uh, simple and quick steps. And each step can take even two or three minutes, okay? Because you want to um, guide your users throughout some kind of path. So for example, don't tell them, hey, there is a bug, go fix it, but do some kind of flow. Hey, there is a bug and not just a bug. Don't like say there is a problem with this function. Go to the story. Like we got a support issue. Let me know like what is the error message. Let me know what is the API endpoint that is problematic. Let me know what is the, the wrong function. Okay, something like this that you will make sure and the user will know that they are on the right path and not like gonna fix a different completely um, issue that you never thought of. Maybe there is an issue, but you aim them to, to focus on, on this issue. So that's why I want to break it down to step to make sure they are focused on the right area and the application and they're fixing the right uh, uh, code and et cetera. And that's why we have steps like tell them, uh, are you on the right track? Are you uh, found the right uh, problematic uh, function? Are you on the right file? This is why we're breaking down to step uh, three, four, that's completely okay. Uh, I guess, I don't know, six is the maximum number, but I, I can imagine um, some simple quest where there is like seven steps where you tell them, go there, go there, go there. Uh, but we don't want like 12 steps quest where uh, the quest is gonna take, I don't know, three hours. We are aiming for, uh, Svandar, correct me if I, uh, I'm wrong, but something like 30, 40 minute quest where each step is uh, like five to 10 minutes and, and you, you, you are able to know that you're on the right track. Exactly, let's say one hour max, I guess. Yeah. Um, like on average, yes, I know like there are gonna people that are gonna invest more on or getting into problem, but on average, something between 30 to 60 minutes, um, at least for, for someone that uh, is not completely lost. Um, then the textbook solution is mainly um, for, <clears throat> for you to make sure you, you are able to, to, to understand what is the right track. It's also uh, very helpful for us when we are going to review the quest. So we make sure, okay, we know how to do it. We are able to check it, but it's also, uh, we're going to able to, uh, to give the users that are stuck or complete the quest. We're going to uh, add the feature when we're going to take the textbook solution and present it to the user that are stuck or going to need help. So this is optional but it's uh, it really gonna help us and, and you to, to bring and deliver a much better quest. Um, and I do want to, uh, to drill down to the steps and give you some examples. 
here we have, uh, this is the final uh, draw of uh, quest where we have three steps. One of them is analyze the data. The second uh, is reproduce locally. And the third one is fixing a bug. And again, this is a very like relative simple quest where you have a bug. We have a problem in, in production. You, you got a support ticket and you just need to fix it. Like some will say it's just one step quest, right? Yeah, you got a bug, just fix it, go uh, and do it without any, any further steps. But we do want to uh, teach our users um, more than just writing code. It's more than this. We do want to um, give them best practices and how to handle bugs and what are the right uh, best to do. So, so we break it out to, to three steps where the first one is you get some kind of report, you get analytics, you understand where is the, uh, the problem. And again, you need to, to make sure you're on the right track by like answering the support uh, person, what is the problem? Because we don't want people to think that the problem is, I don't know, um, for a specific country or something like this. And, and we try to, to guess it by girl stuff but we want to, to make sure that they are gonna fix the right problem. Then we want to encourage people to reproduce stuff locally because this is how you uh, fix bugs in production in, in real team. So we want people to, to, um, to have a way after they're fixing a bug, make sure it was resolved. That's why we, uh, first of all, tell them, hey, before you're going to touch the, the, the code, make sure you know how to produce it, how it looks like, how, how you uh, gonna check it afterward that it was fixed. And after this, um, you're gonna uh, fix the actual bug. And in each quest, in each step, you are able to, uh, to make sure you're on the right track by, by the triggers and the, and the condition. Uh, again, you will need to, to read the documentation, but I will just give uh, some kind of examples. When analyzing the data, we send them um, uh, some kind of report and, and we ask them a question, what is the problem? And here, the, the way users are able to, to move to the next uh, phase is by text, like writing a text on the snack on the, on the chat. So here, they need to answer a message and just, um, we, we are uh, checking it with regex. The, the other part is, um, again, reproduce it locally, A, go and, and see that you are able to uh, check it. Again, now we are matching the, the text against regex and we see what is the user message and we see that it, it, they actually fix, uh, find the right problematic page. Uh, and other options we, uh, we have when fixing a bug, we, uh, we want the users actually write code and open PR. And how do we know when, uh, when the PR is good? We run a simple unit test. Uh, here it's profile test and let's see it. Uh, so what we are doing now is after the user open a PR, um, we are able to run some kind of black box testing. Uh, and in this example, we make sure that uh, the page is responsive and the button is uh, on the right uh, uh, on the uh, on the right position when we are working uh, with a mobile page or iPhone uh, uh, with. And one thing that I, I must say, all the checks that we are doing is not like very very specific, like when users fixing bug, open, open a PR, changing code, they are able to do it on, I don't know, hundreds of the ways, okay? And that, that's great, that's good, because um, as, as someone that's writing code for a living for a very long time, I saw many ways to, to, um, to fixing bug. Um, and yes, there are a couple of ways, they're all legitimate, uh, some of them have pros, some of them have cons, but, in very, very rare, rare cases, there is only one way to solve something. So we are getting it that there are like tons of, 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 uh, of ways to, to solve it. So are we gonna ch uh, check that the, the code is right? 
we are doing some kind of, of black box thing, black box testing. If we want the users um, will, uh, I know, fixing an API and, and return the right uh, result, I don't want you to like scan the code and make sure that they are using the right uh, library or something like this. If what they need to is to fix the API to return the, the right answer, just do some kind of, of request and make sure that the response is right. Maybe do with a couple of, of inputs, something like this. But I do, we don't want to, uh, the checks will uh, check against a very, very specific limitation or something like this. It's the same for uh, PR, it's the same for uh, responses to the chat, it's the uh, same for all the triggers that we have. Um, don't like uh, think about how you're gonna, gonna implement it and check against your solution, but uh, think about more like in a general sense, what you want the user to do and how you make sure that they completed what you asked them to do, okay? Um, that's all my side, I guess. Maybe we have other questions. I also want to add that maybe I think uh, a good recommendation will be to maybe try and play one of our quests in case you haven't yet, just to get a taste of it and how we use it. Um, so you can do something similar or completely different, but just, you know, feel the vibe and how we're doing it. That's it. Yeah, I agree. Someone said, okay, we should include the guide links in the description. All right, I would send, if you're in a Discord channel, you would see the links there, or if you receive the email, but I would do well to add um, the links to the description. Um, is there any questions that um, we would like to ask Mada and Shem? Um, if you have any questions, just drop it in the chat. So let me just check if we have any questions on Discord. If not, we would call it a day. Give me a second. Um, okay, doesn't look like we have any question other than including the guide links in the description. So um, thank you so much, Shem and Spada, for doing this. Um, always nice to have you guys, you know, um, yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for joining the session. We have another interesting session that would be coming up on the 17th, if I'm not mistaken, where our CEO, and this is the next session you certainly should not miss, um, where our CEO on would be telling us, uh, get, taking us through his journey um, from, you know, being in a, a um, being in tech to, you know, founding Wilco. So it's going to be a really, really exciting session. And I'm looking forward to hosting it and also hosting on. On is a very great um, person to have. And he knows how to just, you know, make the right conversation. So I promise you it's going to be a really interesting session. So please do well to join. And thank you so much, Kem Asmada. I really loved, you know, the session. I also learned things. Even though I work, work at Wilco, I also learned things that I didn't know before. So, I mean, it was very, very, um, um, very, very effective. So thank you so much, guys, for doing this. And thank you so much, everybody, for joining. See you all next time. Thank you. Thank you, Shadrach. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.